Hello everyone. Good evening. Hope you all are doing great. Uh, welcome to our session, Meet the Global Leader. Uh, this webinar is actually organized by School of Entrepreneurship Development. Uh, the objective of this session is to share the stories of impactful people around the world, um, how, how they start their professional career, lessons they have learned through their professional journey, um, and the audience of our webinar is university going students and entrepreneurs so that they can get an you know like brief idea about how people are doing things differently in other countries uh, we have uh, today invited uh, miss nastasia who is actually uh, we can say that strategy consultant specialist on development um, acceleration support of social impact ventures of for brazilian and international organizations uh, she, her profile is very impressive and it will take like minutes to, you know, like complete uh, the brief about herself. But let's not, you know, like uh, waste time. Uh, let's directly go to the session. So, Anastasia, welcome to our session. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you all. Uh, great. So, uh, can you share a bit about yourself in brief, apart from my side? Of course, um, maybe I should start early on my career, right? So yeah, I yeah. graduated as an economist in Brazil. I live in the southern part of Brazil in Curitiba, which is the capital of Paraná State, the first state in the south. And I graduated in the federal university here. And I was really and always interested about the international relations of countries and how it would work. And that's why I studied economics. And um, I started my career early, like just after finishing the high school. We do usually internships here during the graduation. So we don't have full time graduation programs in Brazil. And uh, I did started in early in the corporate world and did um, actually a trainee on ExxonMobil. So I started my career in oil industry and um, but I was happy by then because it was a really good trainee and internship. And, um, and then I really got to know how the corporations worked, um, processes and all the organization of international organizations. It's quite useful for us in our lives. And, and I believe you, you all should uh, try to get the lessons on what, whichever space you are, whichever, pro, whichever profile you have, whichever experience you engage to, because it, it can always count. And then, um, and then I did economics, and then I so I started my career as an internship in the corporate world. Then I went to the financial market, which was quite um, an obvious relation for economists to go to. Um, started my career and on this really traditional world, but always trying to make a difference in the pay, in the space I was, even without even knowing. And um, so I, on the financial world, I did, um, I was part of a uh, group of people who wanted to create the first research department of the southern part of Brazil. We, we wouldn't have uh, here research departments to do all the macroeconomic research that is necessary for financial institutions to understand what's going on in the world, basically. And then, um, and then, so I started there and I went to different roles in this organization. And on this organization, it was really good because if it's a small organization, different than the trainee on Exxon, you take multiple responsibilities and multiple roles. And it gives you actually more space because you don't have too many people on top of you. And so it, it was also a good way of doing comparisons and trying to apply things that I've learned in the big corporate world for a smaller organization who was trying to establish itself. And then, um, so then that that is the more traditional part, up to a part where, which leads to what I'm doing right now, um, when you are a career switcher, and that's why I wanted to put it in a little bit more details, when you are a career switcher, you sometimes have things that kind of push you to take decisions that is not the more comfortable way of doing and not traditional way of following a career in a country such as Brazil that has lots of instability, political, economic. So it's not easy. But I had something inside me that really wanted to feel like I was doing a contribution to Brazil and I was helping for the economic development. 
And that's when I found out. So I went abroad. I studied abroad. I went to London and I studied at the London School of Economics, which was like a different world, completely different. It opened my mind to so many different cultures I had never uh, had access to prior. And, um, and, and the, really the globalization completely changed when you feel it and when you experience it rather than you read it. And then when I was there, I found out that there was this amazing field of people who were social entrepreneurs and who were really thinking on a business uh, mindset uh, in a way of how they could use business principles to change the world. How could they face societal challenges and really do a contribution and change the situation, but through business principles? And I had never seen that before. So I was in London. It opened my mind and it was much stronger than me. Like these people talking about millions of people that they wanted to change their lives, billions even. I was like, oh, who are these people? I want to meet them. I want to become their friends. And um, so I came back to Brazil. By then, I was still working on financial markets and decided that it was a time for a career switch. And on this career switch, it's, it was not an easy path and an easy way to do that. Because in Brazil, still today, um, I met this in Europe. Europe is way more developed in terms of the of the field, of the culture, of people knowing what's going on, of the professional uh, experiences and opportunities. And when I was there, um, I actually I, I actually realized that it was a completely field that I had to excavate almost here and uh, and and really like start from scratch. It's not easy. It's not like you have a bunch of money, people funding you in in the background that you can do whatever. But it was a switch that it was really I, it felt into my heart that I had to do it, and which must it was much stronger than me. And since then, I've worked in multiple things that I probably I'm going to explore a little bit later. But what I wanted to bring is that when you like now, look, sometimes when you do things in the past, you don't you don't necessarily find a logical reason. But if it feels for you that it is your path and your way to pursue and it, it's linked somehow to your personality, your purpose or whatever, it's really worth pursuing because we should know that there is space for each and every person in the planet to excel on its own capability, skills, passions and whatever experience and to put your contribution to the world. So I really encourage you on that. And probably Mahbu, I'm really excited about <laughs> whatever I do. So probably I'm gonna wait a little bit and wait for Mahbu to ask me other questions. Cause if not, yep. I will continue to walk to to talk here like forever. You know, yeah, <laughs> definitely we should you know break sometime. Um, the the thing is uh, that you have mentioned. Uh, we would like to know a, a bit about you know like uh, this topic, social entrepreneurship. Uh, so far, you know, uh, my experience, uh, it is very uh, kind of difficult path to take, you know, because this is kind of new field and most of the times, you know, like profit uh, is not going outside the business. Uh, people have to reinvest uh, this profit. So why did you, you know, like um, involve yourself um, with social entrepreneurship? Uh, uh, what motivated you? to, you know, like uh, learn more and do more in the sector, if you can share a of story course. about that. And so I, I, did, I forgot to mention that this was actually in 2013 about that I changed. It, it's been like 10 years and 10 years ago, like no one would talk a lot, especially in Brazil. But it was the fact that I went abroad and I saw like how much the world could profit and really solve challenges in a different and more modern way, more innovative way. So in terms of social entrepreneurship, in terms of what I believe it's the important part of it is actually is actually um, people being entrepreneurs, like being result driven, being like trying looking for problems and trying to find solutions. And I felt like really uh, uncomfortable about so many people talking about problems all the time. And I'm like, if you invest like twice the time of thinking about solution, or at least 10% of the time thinking about solutions, I bet we would find solutions. So I was a bit, um, a bit like discomfortable with uncomfortable with uh, so many people like doing, talking about problems, problems, problems. And I mean, we come from 
one of the countries where we always feel like Brazil can be a big country. Brazil has so many opportunities and still you have lots of inequality. You have lots of problem of education. Of course, I didn't have like a big financial background behind me. But I mean, I'm already the, the like the minimum part of the population who speaks English, who went to a school, who was able to go to university. So, I mean, we, we felt like, how can I retribute to the world? And then um, meeting these social entrepreneurs, I found like really different than either the political parts that I didn't want to engage because here we have so many scandals of corruption. And even if it's not corruption, it's a big career and you have to do lots of alliances and compromise a lot. And I'm like, I think I'm going to do it through the private sector. And uh, doing that through the private sector has advantages. As always, uh, we have advantages and disadvantages in life. But one of the advantages I felt like I could do and I could bring more of myself. So when I think about social entrepreneurship, I think lots of like, how do you find possible solutions? How do you break the complex prog problems into small and um, doable things that you can to advance on uh, on an initiative, on a project? How can you think about resources and the best allocation for that? How can you think about income generation? And if you cannot think about income generation, which strategic partnerships can you do to advance, to become stronger, to grow faster, or even to survive? Because, I mean, if you don't have passion in this field, you don't continue for too long because it's not the normal career path. So, of course, you have to find ways to really find your position on that. And for me in Brazil, I understood that there was space through the organizations like private institutions that wanted to do something a good for goodwill to the world. So there are good people in every place. And I was like, OK, these people, they do social, I mean, things related to, OK, so they feel like they have um, a cause such as hunger and they want to do something to help. But they did it in a really like short term mentality, not a strategic mentality, not in a in a way that you would change and really achieve change and achieve transformational change. And this was the things that these these were the things that were driving me, driving me so that I would say, no, we can do it differently. We can do it in a more strategic way. So what I did is when I came back to Brazil, I started like digging and reading a lot, like really a lot. All of my free time, I was I was trying to understand what were the magazines that talked about it? What were the books? Who were the business leaders? What are the business organizations that are referenced on that? Because I understood that I had to go in the field to really understand from the more developed world how we could uh, get there. But on the other way, how can you apply to a completely different context where people don't even speak English, so you understand the local challenges, but you deal with it in a more business way. And the business world, of course, has like so many business leaders that are um, there are uh, references in the US or in the UK or in Europe. And even if it's not them, but the articles that are written, um, the content that I found were always like from the global north. That is also a point that we're trying to change for the social entrepreneurs field, because there's lots of collective intelligence also on the global south. And but by then, like, let's say 10 years ago and coming from Brazil, it was not easy to access these knowledge. So what I had access to and the way that I learned was through contents, magazines like Harvard Business Review, Stanford Social Innovation Review and trying to me myself, like do the links of everything that I needed to learn because I, I was never like ah, OK, I am an entrepreneur. So until I went to later, so later on, I did a, the first project was to actually assess NGOs, understand their challenges and help them grow. And this is the first project from like how I began to apply the knowledges or try to understand. I'm like, OK, maybe I don't know anything. I was like, and I think it was good to be humble because since it's a different field, you come with a little like open uh, heart an open mind to let's understand instead of let's apply and let's change them. It's not that that's the way, the way it's supposed to be. It's like, let me talk to you. 
let me understand who is your organization, which resources you have, and how much you can leverage from those resources. And which partnerships would be interesting because things are complex, the world is really dynamic, but if you have, if you start to develop this look, this way of saying things, and if you start talking to people and to other organizations, you, after some time, it gets automatic on how do you find a win-win? For me, it was not easy in the beginning. Like, how can I offer? Always I knew what I needed, but I never felt like I could offer something. Me, myself, the organization I was defending. But then when you start looking on that and looking, so through partnerships, you can really grow stronger and faster. And when you start to really understand, like, how can two groups of organizations, initiatives, when they link, how can they do things together that make sense for both of them to grow? So I think that it's a new logic of thinking that it was much more related to my values of collaboration, of innovation, of um, bringing the best out of people or out of organizations and really excelling in things that the society needs so we have a better uh, country tomorrow. And uh, this started like early in my life. Like I didn't mention, but when I graduated in economics, I was already studying economic, like sustainable development and mechanisms to reach that because I didn't feel like the way the world was built was actually bringing equal opportunities for everyone. And depending on how poor you are, it's really hard and it's really a struggle. And we can see that in countries such as Brazil, in India as well, or in so many others of the world. So. For me, social entrepreneurship, it's a lot of the entrepreneurial mindset and business mindset. But when you are driven by passion, but then you really have to understand, okay, if it's hunger that is my cause, what is hunger? Why does it happen? Who is related to that? Which industries, food industries can help on that? Or logistics can help on that? And then you start to make the links so that you really advance on the question of bringing value so that you feel that you had a small change that even can be inspiration, inspiring other people, making them think different, differently, having a, a food industry company. So I became a consultant later on, and that's how we do. Like we understand the cause, we understand who is doing what. So I'm a company and I'm wanting to fight hunger. Uh, if I'm a, a food industry company, how can I do? I can either, and then you start studying because in this dynamic world, you are not gonna come with solutions. You're gonna come with your mindset of how am I able to find solutions in a country, in a country, in a situation that is dynamic? You will not have the information you need, but we have technology. And technology is, if you are driven and if you have a critical knowledge, you can access so much knowledge online that helps you to actually even excel in whatever thing you want. Great, great. I mean, uh, it's a huge experience that you have. And the one point uh, that you mentioned before, uh, that you studied a lot to learn about the sector. So it's very important. It doesn't matter uh, a, what, what is your age or your professional experience. If you want to, you know, like make yourself uh, expert or knowledgeable on some, you know, like uh, top. Uh, continue the uh, habit of study so uh keeping that in mind can you um uh, it would be great uh to know about the organization that you co-founded um rooms against covid brazil uh can you hear me i can i just changed connection sorry because it was cut so i just changed the the modem here Oh, it's total, all right. Uh, so can you uh, share a bit about uh, your organization Rooms Against COVID Brazil and how yeah. it uh, created an impact in the community there? Okay, so I actually skipped and I didn't do like a journey the way I'm supposed to. Let me just bring a little bit more context in a more summarized way that I get to room so that people would understand because the lessons I had there was because of the career that I took before. So as I oh, said, definitely. economy, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. Okay, uh, if you cannot, because the, the screen is frozen, I'll change to closer to the modem, but let's try this way. Um, you can hear me, right? Yeah, yeah. Great.
So, um, and then, so economist, corporate world, financial market, and then I started uh, doing like, uh, organize, doing, it was actually a training uh, program for NGOs. And on this training program for NGOs, for them to grow and, ex and expand their impact, it was really interesting to understand the difference between th theory and practice and how to really apply for those organizations to be able to excel. And then because of that, I actually, um, again, I was really driven like, who are these social entrepreneurs? How can I be them, <laughs> like be their friends? And I really started digging out. And what I found was on business schools, my references, uh, probably because it was my dream to even like do an MBA or something like that back then. Um, and then when I did it, before coming to Rooms Against COVID, um, the thing is that I got so inspired that I'm like, I really want to go to those business schools. And in the past, I didn't know even that we could go to those really good universities for summer programs. So studying at London School of Economics was like that and was a shift in my life. So I went to INSEAD, like sponsored, and I got a scholarship because I wouldn't, I wasn't able to afford not even the company I was working for. So applied for a scholarship and I studied social entrepreneurship in at INSEAD in France. And it was like a game changer for me. And then it was like people on the field. And I was like, I was like, why am I here? I don't know that much. I was just getting into there. And I really believe that when you have a dream, you go for it. And even without knowing, because it will make it worth next or afterwards. And for me, what I learned, one of the things I learned through the networks and through the things was I was a social entrepreneur. And I'm like, Really? Because since I was, you can be an entrepreneur even inside an organization and start things. And that encouraged me so much that it was really good for me to have this experience, not only of having labels to for my encouragement, but having knowledge and having access to knowledge in a different way. And after going to INSEAD, I came back and I started and I worked for UNUS uh, Social Business Brazil. So because I went after them and I'm like, I really want to do partnerships with you up to a point that they got to know me better and they invited me to work with them. So again, when you go for it, even without really knowing, I was like really scared, but I'm like, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to study a lot. And, yeah. and I don't even know what I'm doing sometimes, but imagine working with Yunus and then up to a point where I was sitting next to him and I'm like, oh, I'm talking to a Nobel Peace Prize. I didn't even know my name almost like by then. I was like, oh, I can't even speak because I was so excited to be there. And I think once you reach certain things in your life, you feel it's possible to go to the next level. So that's why it's really important to start. And if it weren't for that, if it weren't for going for INSEAD or for working for UNO Social Business and then opening a consulting because I saw business organizations weren't really knowing how to create social impact projects. And I became a freelance consultant. Um, after all this, I was moving to Europe, kind of really tired of the field in Brazil, because this is like the great part. The other part that when you are a dreamer, when you want to change the world, sometimes I was really open hearted without really taking attention and into the things that I should have. And there are people who are not well-intentioned on this field as well, not only, but as well. And I wasn't aware. So I got people who really stole the job I did, who didn't pay me, that I had to go to court and to ask for the money that I worked in prior and I didn't receive back. And I'm talking about it because sometimes when you are a dreamer, you also have to be aware of what is the country that you are and how do you protect yourself from the things that might happen? So I wasn't paying attention to the contract the way that I should. And I signed things that I shouldn't. And then people use it in the bad sense. All of that, even the deceptions, because I got really sad. I was kind of tired. I'm like, Brazil is really behind. I can't do this anymore. Let's go to Europe. When I got there, and I, because it was the field where I got the, 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 all the information about social entrepreneurship, I was in Paris for a really amazing summit that I recommend for everyone to participate because you can also do it online, which is called Change Now Summit. And most of the content is in English. And I was there really excited because it's the energy of everyone who is changing the world across the world and in different players of the industry, different stakeholders 
when I was there, I'm like, oh, this is my, this is where I want to be. I want to live in a world like that. But the pandemics came. So COVID arrived. I was in Paris. I didn't even have like a place to live or a, a job, even though I had two offers. And I understood that it was time to go back to Brazil because it would be too risky to stay there. It was this begin, really early beginning of the pandemics where no one knew nothing at all, like what would happen in the world, how much would it take? Things were starting to close. And then I had, okay, fine. This dream won't be able to come true of moving to Europe and feeling a bit of the, the structure that yeah. more developed countries have. And I came back and it was really weird because it was, you, you guys are much younger, but um, it's, it's like Back to the Future, the movie. I felt like I've lived in the future of having COVID pandemics. When I arrived in Brazil, Brazil was behind. So no one believed it would arrive COVID here. And I'm like, Jesus, I live there. Like, it will come. Like, you're not understanding. It's not my opinion. It's like spreading across the world. So I'm like, I have to do something. I have to do something. Because I felt I was coming from the future. I can never really explain what it is, the feeling. But if you like, I've seen this movie before. I really have to, since I'm already driven through impact. So what I did, probably because it's the way I, my head worked. It's not that you should do exactly the way that I did. It was the way I found out if it inspires you, amazing. But I was like, what's going on in Europe? Let me assess the network there and see if I can bring something to Brazil since they are ahead of us. And I found out this project, amazing, actually a movement called Tech for COVID-19, which was founded by founders of startups and the government in a collaboration that I found amazing that the government came to the CEO, CEO and founders of startups and said, okay, these are the problems we have to solve. Nothing better than you that have the technological knowledge to find solutions that are rapidly scalable so that we grow faster than the virus. And I found this amazing. So Tech for COVID-19 was a movement along with the government and civil society. And I'm like, this is amazing. I tried to bring this project to Brazil, but it would be too complex because there were other people involved. I'm like, okay, fine. I'm going to bring one of those projects to Brazil because then I will be able to really apply everything that I learned and let's see how it goes. And of course, I was pretty scared. Of course, I knew not. I knew nothing about the health system. I knew nothing. I was not a founder of startup, but I reached them. And I'm like, I really want to bring this project to Brazil. And so I became the co the founder of Rooms Against COVID Brazil. And I start, I didn't have people to start this with, but I was sure that I couldn't do this by myself. So what did I do? I bring two cousins of mine who are like my brothers. And I'm like, you really have to help me on that. Like, come and you're a lawyer. We need to have some sort of knowledge on law, on law. And another one who has a more spirit of entrepreneurial spirit of solving problems. So we kind of started bringing people and saying, we're going to do something. It was just before the lockdown. And when it was the lockdown, we already had started this project in Brazil. So the objective of Rooms Against COVID and me as an economist who thinks about resource allocation was quite intuitive and logical. Okay, the industry, the tourism industry is closed, is shut down, of course, because of COVID and lockdown. So there are lots of rooms of hotels who are empty. And we have lots of healthcare workers who need to travel across the country for uh, to be able to fight the pandemics and to be able to work in different hospitals. And what if we use those rooms to allocate them so they have a proper way to proper place to stay, and they felt they felt like they could be safe as well. And then you started getting to know this world in Brazil, and you felt like the healthcare workers here they didn't even have a minimum income like established in law. And then there were people who really needed support and really needed to be encouraged because they were our army of saviors and they were having like no respect at all. So when you start digging into the questions, you really understand the barriers. And it's like a list of things that of things that you have to do. I started bringing people. I started assessing NGOs who had like uh, open programs for people to apply as volunteers because it was a volunteer based. But since we had a culture and we were inspired by startups that had this really knowledge on doing things fast, on moving quickly, and then you have a mistake and then you correct the mistake and you continue rather than really studying what you're going to do, doing a really big strategic planning. And when you apply, sometimes the world changed, the problem has changed and you are too late. So we were really horizontal and we were bringing people to think together 
up to a point where we started structuring, okay, we have to have a volunteer's uh, place, we have to have the law space because it was risky. We were facing death risks, right? Um, and then we're like, we have to have sanitary conditions. So I assessed an NGO that I met on the first project that I started way behind on the, on the NGO thing. And they had sanitary people. And I'm like, let's create like a guideline. We already have the Portugal guideline for sanitary conditions. Let's bring it and adapt it to Brazil with locals and Brazilians. So we started doing that way before so many other people. So up to a point where we started having a structure and Rooms Against COVID understood that not only we were offering rooms for these people, but those rooms were saving lives because they were part of the chain that were more exposed to the virus and therefore were almost more prone to spread the virus outside the, the, the hospitals. So first we would protect them and we give them a little bit of structure Secondly, we would cut the chain of contagion. So it was preventive health in a, in a, in a situation where we didn't have vaccines. So it was the, the, remembering that we were talking about, uh, when was it? March 2009, 2020. Um, and, and then uh, what we did is we also found out that these healthcare workers, they, since they were healthcare workers, the families that didn't have much money put everyone that was on risk to live with them because they didn't have, they weren't able to afford um, uh, people that would care about, I don't know, people that had diabetes, people that had vulnerabilities in terms of the health and immunity. So the way we did Rooms Against COVID, we understood that also these people were leaving their houses to save lives. And when they were came, coming back to their houses to be able to rest, they were putting their lives and their families' lives at risk because of the contagion of COVID. And we were really, really uh, touched by that. So we we kind of understood lots of things, even the mean and bad things that were behind. Uh, the Brazilian government was putting lots, lots of energy and uh, lots of people and fake news and supporting fake news against the vaccine, against preventive health. So we understood that we really, we were like, okay, we really, and, and we weren't reaching those healthcare workers. We understood that we had to go to media to be able to break the barrier of information so that the healthcare workers were able to know that our program existed. And then we started also having healthcare workers as their first incomers to become our ambassadors to show that our program was safe, it existed, and to test in real life it, if it worked. And it was really amazing because when you have a really good purpose behind, when you have people who come to you as a volunteer on a culture of a startup and everyone really engaged to make a difference, so many amazing things happen. So we started becoming friends with journalists because we needed to go to media. We understood that lots of healthcare workers hadn't access actually to even the, the mayor, the, um, the municipal program for that the mayor created for them to access it because people were breaking the information and being afraid there would be too much of a demand and too big of a demand. And going to media was the way that we lose control. We were like, okay, we have to lose control so people know our program exists because we had to prove demand to be able to have the hotels engage with our program. So each time it was a different demand or a different issue because the hotels would say, do you have demand? Because we don't have demand. And I'm like, we do have demand, so prove it. So I'm like, <laughs> how are we proving that we have demand to occupy the room? So we have a partnership with the hotels. Anyway, so lots of things start to happen. And if you have a committed team, if you have a, a, like a really clear purpose that we have healthcare workers, we're going to, I remember so many discussions. Okay, we are here to support the hotels that are able to break. We are here to support the healthcare workers that need some place to, to, to stay and the population that want, needs to have them in healthy conditions to be able to fight COVID. We wanted everything a win-win up to a point we understood priorities. Okay, our priority is actually the healthcare workers. Even though we're also helping the hotels, we have to do everything we can for them to be able to access. And then you start to understand, okay, how are we using Instagram? How are we using YouTube? How are we using Facebook? Like all these media platforms, we understood we were putting lots of effort on Instagram, but the healthcare workers were not on Instagram, our public. 
the beneficiaries were not there. They were in Facebook. Facebook. So then we understood that it, Facebook was the healthcare workers, Instagram for the hotels, LinkedIn to be able to get partnerships. And, and then you start to really put into practice, but having this movement and Rooms Against COVID completely changed my life because I was able to apply so many things that I learned in the past that weren't really connected one to another in an obvious way. Again, when you look backwards, you can say, oh, okay, I'm a business developer, consultant that do strategy for organizations to really create innovative pro projects rooted to social change. Now it's easy for me to say that, but I also did the, my career in an entrepreneurial way. So I had to read about business development to understand that this is the way that I think. Then I had to go to the social entrepreneurship education to understand, oh, I am an entrepreneur. I can be an intra-entrepreneur. That's what I've been doing in the other organizations I did. So again, sometimes things are not quite logical, but if you go after it and if you have good sense of people, knowledge, to talk to, to share, not, not have, being ashamed of not knowing and going after your dream, but really understanding the cause, going deeply and trying to build alliances, lots of things can happen. Wow, it's an amazing uh, journey that you have shared and so many things to learn from, uh, you know, like your journey that uh, uh, you were doing different things and, you know, like because it was your um, maybe mission and you were passionate about it that uh, on so regarding social uh, social entrepreneurship and as you, you were clear about your mission, uh, you uh, were... You, you did visualize that what you want to achieve uh, that's that's how you can you know like you you have started your journey you know like by reading by involving yourself with association and this is the best thing you know like to achieve your dream or objective or mission you need people you need network you need association you know like to it's it's like a joint collaboration if you partner with different organizations it it, it will be easier to you know like achieve it very faster and the thing that very important thing that you mentioned, uh, the team or members, people you can trust, you know, like with like minded people who are passionate like you jointly, you know, like it is really easier and faster to achieve any dream, achieve anything. So it's really amazing that your journey, journey, your journey that you have shared. Uh, we are almost at the end of our session. I mean, it's uh, your career, uh, your professional uh, journey is really huge. Uh, but you know, like we have the time limitation. So my last question to know from you is, you know, like if anyone wants to, you know, like um, social uh, or start their career in social entrepreneurship, uh, what are the skills? Um, as students should develop, you know, uh, whether it can be for professional sector, it can be for, you know, like entrepreneurial journey. Uh, what are your suggestions for students who are currently in university right now? Uh, the skills they should develop and if they want to be a social entrepreneur. Um, I, will, I, I, think it's, they should, it, yeah. I think it's really important for you to be driven by something that moves you. Because for me, what it moved me was the strategy and the business part. That's why I went after the business schools and the business strategies to be able to accelerate. But some people, they are, go, they are amazing at the field, like on field work of whatever cause that they are. And they have the skills related. So it's really particular because you have to think of social entrepreneurship much more of how do we solve problems? How do we engage people? How do we get resources or leverage resources? And these can be social assistance. It can be HR people. It can be finance people. It can be business people. It can be partnerships. It can be commercial. It can be lawyers. It doesn't matter. It, whatever profession you have, you have skills that are useful for the world. So if you feel that you don't have, you don't put exactly um, your passion, what you know about. And again, if you are too humble and sometimes the country, the situation puts us in, in, situ, in places where we don't feel our value, we don't see clearly what can we bring. Sometimes we know what we can learn, but not too much on what can we bring. But we can bring, everyone can bring. It doesn't matter if it's a life experience. It doesn't matter if it's a particular knowledge, a technical knowledge, or it doesn't matter if it's a will to talk to people. 
because we have mental health issues. Like really, whatever profession you have, you have a skill to change the world with that. So it you should go to what drives you, what makes you feel happy. What And then you can think back like whichever compliments you received in different projects. It can be from a peer, it can be from a friend, it can be from a boss, it can be from your family. Like what it is that you do well, because the things that we do well, sometimes we take for granted and we don't really see it. But this thing, sometimes it's your unique value contribution, <laughs> let's put this way, um, to the world. And or, or don't even bother with unique too much because sometimes you, you cannot really see it. You can be plus one of an amazing group of people, but also doing by yourself. I did lots of things by myself. Of It's hard. I mean, you have to have resilience. You have to take care of your mental health, your physical health. So you ha don't have burnout. You don't get too sad about the things that happen in your life. You have to be well. And of course, for me, again, I I come from a privileged background where I was able to, okay, now I earn money, now I don't earn money. And then it was not easy also because money is an issue and it is important. So sometimes you leave to, to understand, but you can also be inside an organization in a traditional corporation and understand how this traditional corporation can change the world for the better. So it can be education. You have to go to the sustainable development goals. I think it's the first agenda that is more clear on causes and different causes and read it, the SDGs, and understand it. And on the other way, like there are lots of magazines. There's Stanford Social Innovation Review, lots of free articles. Uh, lots. Now we have so many free courses, Coursera, and you have your organization, your institution also. So I think it actually depends on your profile but it can be business skills and i do i do the only thing that i do believe is that whichever project you are engaged to have business mindset people with you because it helps a lot to structure and have entrepreneurial mindset which is there will be lots of problems and it's not a clear path and it's creativity to find solutions and if you go and be even being scared you just go and do it because you're going to learn from it and value the contribution of teams and multiple perspectives as well. Because sometimes someone who knows nothing about your business makes one question that is actually like, oh, I never thought of it. So um, and finance people sometimes or sales people also help for you to be able to grow this initiative and to make it stronger. And again, it can be inside the project. It can be a friend. It can be a mentor. And I really do believe that, especially when we come from countries where you don't have too much of a developed structure and it depends on your background, remember that the internet allows like this connection to happen. Like, how could I imagine I'm talking to you? I hope I can inspire you, yeah. but I'm sure there are lots of organizations, institutions, people that can become mentors, friends, supporters, so that you are able to excel and uh, and resilience, I believe, but take care of yourselves because <laughs> I pass through and t pay attention as well who you who engage to because there are lots of people who get into this agenda saying they want to change the world and they don't have a good uh, intention. So we have to be believers and dreamers, but but do it in a way that you don't really drown if some in something happens and be surrounded by resources that you can assess so that you can share it and it doesn't become like a lonely journey because the great thing about it is to share and learn from everyone that gets close to you to advance on something that really makes our hearts and our eyes shine wonderful wonderful you know like uh... and i'm here as well you can assess me like yeah. i can share my linkedin or and i don't post as much as i should i, I might change that because lots of people have been asking me to do so but um, you can assess me on LinkedIn and whatever I can be of help. It yeah. would be a pleasure. Yeah, definitely. And there's, you know, like uh, to it's a pleasure to have you with us. And it's a great opportunity to learn um, from you, uh, to know your journey, how you saw things differently, how you did things differently. So it is going to help uh, our entrepreneurs and students to give them an idea about, you know, like journey of a professional person. And, and that's really insightful and amazing. And we are uh, really honored 
and happy to have you with us. And thank you so much, Anastasia, for sharing your journey. And it's, it's been a very insightful session. I'm, I'm glad it, you felt this way. I hope I inspired you all, but also to show that sometimes a career path is not linear. You go up, down, but if you go after it and if you dream of it, I, I really believe it does compensate because we have a limited time in life and so much creative capability. So try to use the resources, TED Talks as well, and uh, be surrounded by people who encourage you because it's really good to have this energy and to be able to apply it on a daily basis. And count on me as well. So thanks yes, for reaching out. Yeah, thank you so much. Have a good day. You too. Bye, everyone.